Hey everybody, it's Stephanie Ward of FireflyCoaching.com. I'm here today with Chris Gillibo, author, a speaker, and blogger, and he's going to share with us his top marketing tips for small business owners. So welcome, Chris. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It's a big honor. So can you tell us what are some of your top tips for small business owners to help them get more clients and grow their businesses? Okay, great. Um, I was thinking a lot about this, and I was like, okay, the first thought I had was about my grandma, actually. <laughs> because I had this strategy, I call it a strategy, but it really, it just kind of happened because when I first started my email list, uh, my grandma joined the email list and one day my dad went to visit her. She was like in a nursing home and she said, I got a nice email from Chris yesterday. And then the next week it was the same thing. I got another nice email from Chris and he wrote me all these things. <laughs> and you know, she didn't realize that she was on the email list that was going out to a lot of people. But then I realized later this is actually kind of interesting because you should write your email or you know, whatever it is that you're writing or communicating as if you're communicating to one person mm. um, rather than like, here's a whole group of people like I'm actually connecting with you, Stephanie, or whoever else is over there because you care about what I have to say. And hopefully I'm going to give you something that's, that's valuable. So since that time, I've, I've often thought about my grandma when I'm writing my newsletter or my book or something like there's one person out there. I'm just writing to that person. How can I help them? That's tip number one. Oh, I love that. That's so personal. And I, I like thinking of someone like your grandmother because it changes the tone of what you actually say and how you speak. It's less, I don't know, salesy or industry-like. Yeah, exactly. And she's not afraid to complain either. <laughs> okay. So sometimes she'll tell my dad, she's like, I don't know why Chris is telling me all these things. Like, I don't care about these events like all over the world. I don't travel anymore. <laughs> so, but, you know, Epic. That's, just, that's how it goes. It goes. <laughs> okay. What else you got for us? Okay. My second tip, um, which, which kind of relates a little bit, is to, you know, always be thinking about why someone else should care uh, about what it is that you have to say. And I think that we tend to assume a lot, and sometimes mm -hmm. I assume as well. I'm like, oh, this person's on my email list, or they follow me on social media. Therefore, you know, of course they're interested in whatever I'm doing. And if I have a product or if I have a course, then naturally they want to know about it. But I think it's, it's really helpful to always kind of take a step back and to be a bit skeptical and to think, okay, if I'm getting this myself, uh, am I interested in this? Uh, do I care? And I think it's possible, you know, when we talk about personalized, personalization, I think it's, it's possible to communicate in a, way, <clears throat> in a way that where even if what you're selling or offering isn't a good fit for that person at the time, you can still do it in a way that's kind of fun or lighthearted or interesting enough to where they're like, okay, I don't want this, but I'm still interested in what Stephanie has to say. Mm. So I'll come back. So I guess I just always try to think, why should somebody else care about this? Why is it relevant to their life? I love that because we can get into our own thoughts and processes and thinking this is what I want. This is what's good for me. I think this is what the people want, but to really think more about them instead of yourself. That's very powerful. Yeah. And we don't always know, like we don't always know what yeah. people want and that's, that's okay. So there's a bit of a process and there's a bit of discovery that goes involved. Uh, but you know, still somehow it's like, if you're always thinking I'm doing this because like they signed up for my whatever, um, presumably because they thought there's something helpful to mm. it. And so I guess I often think, what is helpful? What is useful? Maybe this is a bonus tip because it's not really my third one. This is okay. 2.5. 2 you know, I, think, I think people get, um, small business owners, maybe they're often thinking about how to create something that is the most innovative or you know, something that has never been done before. Mm. And it's because we idolize people like Steve Jobs or whoever um, and, and that's great, but most of us are not necessarily making something that has never been made before that's completely new. We're just providing different sorts of solutions to problems, and, and that's okay. That's good. So, being, so thinking about what is useful, what is helpful, I think may, may help you answer that part about why, should, why people should care. Love that. Useful doesn't have to be you know, groundbreaking. Yeah, you don't have to make the next iPhone. Most people aren't going, I don't know how to make an iPhone. I don't know how to make an app, <laughs> okay. you know, but hopefully there's something that I can make that's helpful to other people. Indeed. Okay, number three. Number three. Um, I was thinking way back, long ago, I wrote this book, The $100 Startup, and I told this story that, that um, people have responded to pretty well, and I call it um, Give Them the Fish. So give people the fish. And so what this means is um, often in, as business owners, we kind of get wrapped up into all the different details and behind the scenes of our business. And I don't think most people care about those things. Mm -hmm. And again, we think maybe they're interested in it, but um, the story I tell is if you go to a restaurant and you know, you're going to place your order 
you just want to order your food. You want them to bring you the food, basically. You don't want them to be like, oh, come back in the kitchen. Let's talk about this. Do you know, let me show you how the ingredients are going to work. Do you want to be part of this? Do you want to help make your fish? You're like, of course not. Like, you're, you're kind of stressed out at the end of the week, and so you want to go and have a glass of wine, and they bring you the food. So whatever it is that you're offering, you know, maybe some people want to know, like, the whole behind the scenes, but I think those people are a minority, and I think most people just want you to be like, here's this thing. Here's why it makes your life better, and here's, here's why it matters. That is so important because we can get involved in the how and the process, but people don't really care. They just want the thing. They don't want to know what's happening in the kitchen, I don't mm -hmm. think. Exactly. That's a great if you story. have a good thing, if you have a good thing, then lead with the thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a thing, maybe sometimes also people tend to, like, you don't feel confident in what you're offering, and so you, you wrap it in something else. And oh, that's a I good think one. there the, the problem is, like, really focus on what your core offering is, and if it's great, then lead with that. I love that. So have a good thing. And if you're not right, feeling yeah, like you that, have, yeah. if you don't have a good thing, maybe you need to dig a little bit deeper and see that's what good. comes up there. So maybe we went in reverse order. That should be zero, actually. <laughs> Let's just start, go back to that zero, have a good thing. And okay. then you think about your grandma and think about why people should care. And then just give them, give people what they, what they really want, you know, love not it. all the other stuff. Love it. And I can highly recommend Chris's book, The $100 Startup, along with all of his books, which is a great segue to his newest book, which is coming out very soon. Will you tell us about that book? Yes, you're very kind to ask. Um, it's called Side Hustle. And uh, my new book, it's for everybody who doesn't necessarily want to be an entrepreneur. Um, I discovered after, I don't know, you know, 10 years of telling people to be entrepreneurs, <laughs> that there are in fact a lot of people who actually like jobs and or can't quit their job right now or they like being part of a company or an organization and that's fine. Um, but I think a lot of those people do still want to have a second income or a third income or to have something that expresses their creativity in a way that makes money. And I don't think most entrepreneurial education really addresses that because it's always about like, here's why you should quit your job and take this big risk. And so what I'm trying to do in the new book, Side Hustle, is to present this kind of step-by-step -step plan. It's a 27-day plan. So every day you do one thing. And uh, at the end of the time, you'll have this project uh, without taking a lot of risk and without spending a lot of money. Um, so it's helping people who aren't entrepreneurs kind of do something entrepreneurially without quitting their job. That is so exciting. And I can also let everyone know, if you don't already know, which you should know, that Chris has an amazing podcast called The Side Hustle School. Is that right? Side That's right. Yeah, thank and, you. Um, so you. And it's every day. It's 10 minutes. It's short. It's consumable. It's so exciting. He, he has these inspirational people he's talking with, so you can get ideas there as well. So the podcast, along with the book, you know, for yourself or for people that you know that just want to start. Maybe, maybe you stay in a side hustle, but maybe you, it, it ends up being an entrepreneurial yep. show, right? Some people have switched all the way, right? Yep, yep, yep. I think the thing is there's no downside to having a side hustle. Nothing can go, like, you're not going to lose your money. Uh, you're going to spend your time on something that's interesting to you. And so, yes, it can turn into something fun or it makes, you know, a thousand euros, a thousand dollars, whatever it is a month, and that's great. That's great too. Awesome. These are such good tips. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with, uh, with me and the community and the Firefly mm -hmm. community. And guys, get the books. I'll put all the links below. And if you have any questions, include those below as well. Thank you so much, Chris, for being here. Thank you so much, Stephanie.